And uh, welcome everyone to the Rotary Club of El Paso. Very exciting uh, meeting today. Very excited about the program and some of the things we're changing up. Mm -hmm. uh, we mentioned last time we want to shake things up a little bit, make it a little bit interactive. Uh, we're going to include a, uh, another uh, pop-up guest that Leah Masters will, will uh, introduce here in a second. And uh, we're also including some videos of our Rotarians. And something very interesting coming up is uh, we're going to make it interactive, uh, the presentation uh, today from um, our guest. And you'll be able to uh, answer a poll. We'll, we'll issue a poll online. You'll be able to click on the, your, your selective response. Mm -hmm. Be safe, Arthur. Just uh, trying to try different things. So uh, as um, Sunny Brown mentioned during our installation, you know, let's not be afraid of changing things up and, and uh, you know, challenge ourselves. But uh, keeping with tradition, I'm gonna hand it over to Stan Oakey's here. He's gonna do the invocation pledge and four-way test. Take it away, Thank Stan. You, sir. Thank you. So if you all would please bow your heads and uh, we'll just go before uh, our Creator. Heavenly Father, we just come before you today to ask your blessings on all those that are present and all those that are unable to be present. Um, we pray that we receive your special blessings because we're committed to be a real service organization to serve our community. Uh, each of us in our daily routine come to know the joy in caring uh, with others, of caring for others, not as fortunate as we are. And we ask you to help us to uh, bless them in our own special ways through our service to our community. And uh, we ask you to bless our leaders with compassion and wisdom that their decision making may be benefit to all. And we just thank you and receive these things in the name of our Lord. Amen. And the Pledge of Allegiance, if you'll say this with me too, please. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, to the flag. Of, the of, the of the United States of America. States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, nation God, and it is indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the four way test of the things we think, say, or do. First, First is truth. First, truth. Third. Second, Second is third. Second is third. Third, third will be good third will 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 goodwill and better friendships. And fourth will be beneficial. Good job, guys. Leah, yeah, take it away. Okay. I am so thrilled to have this gentleman be our pop-up guest today because he loves to talk. We love to listen to him. He fell in love with a variety of weather he grew up with near the Colorado Rockies. A kindergarten teacher discovered his talent for talking, mostly when she was trying to teach. She took him aside, gave him a Fisher Price toy mic microphone karaoke bo box, and said, "Pretend you're on the radio." He came back over. She ca he came back over an hour later, and he was still talking. She knew that it was destined for a career that would involve his talent for talking. He received a bachelor's of arts degree from Colorado State University, Pueblo, Colorado, a double emphasis on radio, TV broadcasting, and public relations. He worked on contracts for the Corporate Relations Department of Adolf Kors Company in Golden, Colorado. His mother, to this day, still watches every weathercast on all the Denver TV stations every morning, midday, and night. This heavily influenced his decision to continue his education in the field of meteorology, the study of weather. He received a second Bachelor's of Science degree in meteorology from uh, Metropolitan State University in Denver, Colorado. He holds both an American Meteorology Meteorological Society broadcast certification as well as a broadcast certification from the National Weather Association. He started his career at KCBD News Channel 11, the NBC network in Lubbock, Texas, as a weekend meteorologist. He worked there broadcasting the weather and giving tornado warnings for one year and eight months until he was hired by KTSM News Channel 9, the NBC affiliate here in El Paso. He started on May 29, 1995 as weekend and morning meteorologist for three years, then became the chief meteorologist for additional 21 years and four months. Two years ago, his 
this upcoming September, he ventured into a new career as what he calls a social media meteorologist. His wife, makes TV quality brought uh, borderland weather forecast graphics and post them twice a day, weekdays and weekend mornings. He has local business sponsor, his weather graphics. He does look, look live brought weather casts from businesses or job sites, spokesperson commercials and digitally markets them. He's also a master certified a hypnotist who has been helping people help themselves make positive changes for 15 years. He's currently launching his new hypotherapy therapy brand with a new website and social media platform. Please welcome Chuck DeBroder. Hey, all right. Thank you for that intro. And thank you, Rodeo. Uh, the Rotary Club people I have uh, met, in fact, I spoke to a Rotary Club years ago. But I love your slogan, people of action. And that's been a mantra of my life as well. I love the borderland. I love the people. And I just, um, I've stayed here. I've been here t over 25 years and forecasting the weather here and uh, doing something I love. And I believe in it. I'm healthier, happier, and busier as an entrepreneur and uh, working for myself. I was working from home before this quarantine and so you know we go a little stir crazy we run around the block and uh you know get a little change of scenery by going to walmart every once in a while but yeah we are a digital marketing agency we have had sponsors like po toyota for 22 months to drive auto collision uh for 21 months and now limelight real estate contracting and 100% custom home building company, our brand new sponsor. So, and yeah, I've, I've been a hypnotist as well. Somebody said I was brainwashing everybody secretly into making my name a brand name, but um, you know, you make yourself a brand name by being yourself. So I think that's the key. No one can be a better person than you. No one can be a better Chuck than, than me or a better Doug, Poland or a better uh, Yasser than uh, yourself. So uh, thank you again for inviting me. Uh, we here in the borderland have been way too hot. We have an unusually strong upper level ridge of high pressure and uh, was one above my predicted high yesterday. We hit 106, the record high was 107 set back in 1951 and today's record high 110 set back in 1979 and I predicted 107 today 108 tomorrow and then 109 degrees Saturday 108 Sunday and then our rain chances go up on Monday with a high of 107 and we cool off to 103 next Wednesday I, that's I'm kind of uh obliged to give the forecast here every time I speak. So there you go. All right. So any questions right now from any Rotary Club members? This is kind of cool. This is the first time I've done a, a Zoom intro here. I know I'm a talking animal, so I yeah. can talk an hour if need be. So. Well, Chuck, maybe in the future you consider uh, doing the full program as part of our uh, weekly program series. So yeah, yeah. I would I would love to, yes, sir. I would love to. Excellent. Uh, it would be my honor for the Rotary Club. And, uh, you know, clubs like this really are unsung heroes of the community because uh, they get businesses working together. And I really think they help boost the business community, which helps uh, indirectly um, influence the employees, maybe create more jobs and uh, more opportunities for people here in the borderlands. So we also do uh, daily forecasts across the border as well, the Chihuahua, Frontera, and uh, we do, I just finished forecasts for Ciudad Huatimac and Jimenez and Camargo uh, to our, uh, I always mention every night my Chuck's backyard weather, we're three states and two countries you know, far west Texas, southern New Mexico, and northern Chihuahua, Mexico. 
And really, we are an economic powerhouse here when it comes to uh, most locations in the United States. And a lot of people don't know that. But looking at the housing industry now, uh, boy, there's eight, nine buyers lined up to buy a house. And there's a lot of product that's not available in East Lake and Far East El Paso. So we are booming as a community and as a city. And I like to see that. All right. All right. Uh, Chuck, I have a question for you. This is Carl sure. Uh Tell us about uh, your wife's restaurant. Uh, are you still into that? And also, if you get a chance, tell us how you learned German. <laughs> Uh, Mi abuelita es alemán, right? My oma is from Deutschland, from Hamburg. Uh, and I have uh, two years off the Hochschule studied and two years off the, uh, in the university. So I studied two years in high school, two years in college at CSU Pueblo, which is kind of like the UTEP of Colorado. And then my grandma uh, is German. And she was the only one to handle a uh, very feisty southern ireland I irishman and that's my mom's side and then my dad's from the isle of guernsey in the english channel isles and uh, he's french and uh, danish and, and uh so i'm a i'm a mutt but yeah that's how i learned german and what was the first uh question there about the restaurant of your wife oh uh, yeah now it's been closed because of the quarantine but her and her mom have uh run that for uh, 10 years. We'll see if they'll open up here again. Okay. But uh, she has a segment every Wednesday, Cooking with Rosario, on Chuck DeBroder Certified Meteorologist Facebook page. We live stream. Uh, this week, uh, yesterday, she made Kung Pao beef, a fresh vegetable Chinese lo mein, and a vanilla, uh, ginger, spiced tea, and a uh, pecan or pecan depending on what area of the country you're on pecan pie uh so anyway all right chuck uh, thank you so much for for hey, being a guest uh we, we gotta get moving with the program uh hey, thank you for for pleasure. being here. very delighted to have you and keep keep us in mind for, uh to be a speaker in the future and get with mark mathis uh, oh okay I'll, awesome I'll, and follow all my social media platforms we'll provide sure you will. With the daily forecast and a lot more Sure will. Thanks. Thanks, Thank Jack. you. And Leah, uh, as far as guests, I see Daniel Marine also uh, with um, uh, with uh, KTSM. And Daniel, welcome. Uh, good to see you again. And I'm not sure if any other Rotarians have any guests I'd like to introduce before we move on with the program. Hey, Daniel. All right. So uh, let's move on to announcements. And uh, Chuck, we're going to need those hypnosis skills of yours because Guys, the dues are coming up. You uh, probably received a letter, an email notification of our yearly dues. And I learned this from Chuck. It's important for you to pay these dues because I'm using the hypnosis uh, tactics here that I just learned. You're going to send me a bill for that. But uh, it's important to pay your bills because our budget is extremely tight this year. Our signature fundraiser, the Wine Fest, has uh, been postponed for next year. So uh, very critical, important for everyone to pay those dues, uh, to uh, help out with our community projects, to help out with our operations budget. It is very tight. Please take care of those dues as quickly as possible. And uh, shout out to Andy Watley with all the stuff he's doing on social media. After this meeting, everybody go on Facebook, hit like, share a posting, make a comment, follow us on Facebook. Andy and his team are doing a tremendous job with that. Thank you so much, Andy. Uh, I'll encourage everyone share the gift of Rotary. You know, invite somebody to Rotary, uh, gift them a yearly membership as Andy Watley did um, and with Carlos, and uh, very exciting to do that. So keep us in mind for that. And as part of shaking things up, we have a few minutes here before we start on the program. Promise to shake things up and. We're introducing the uh, member series. Last week, we did Matt Nyland on a video, uh, what he did to quarantine. This week, uh, Andy was, was kind enough to help us put this video together. This is Mike Hackett speaking of what Rotary is and, and 
you and, and he starts it overall on board. So here's our very own Mike Hackett. What is Rotary? Rotary is an international organization that I'm proud to be a member of uh, that has impact not only internationally and globally, but also on a local level. As far as international, our main focuses are in clean water in areas that don't need it. Uh, eradication of polio has been our focus for 30 plus years, and we are this close to eradicating polio throughout the world. I can still remember when I first joined, there was still polio cases in South America, Africa, uh, and the Far East. And to date, uh, as of January last I heard, there was just a handful of cases in Afghanistan and Pakistan areas. So we are definitely had an impact on what goes on around the world. Um, but locally, we're able to connect uh, with local friends and, and business leaders, making great friends. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Give money to support local projects here in town. Our wine festival that we do every year raises money for things like our scholarships to Paul Foster School of Medicine, um, our ramp projects where we'll get together on a weekend once a month and we'll go out, a bunch of guys and gals, and just build a handicap ramp and have a good day and do something good for our community. And there's nothing better than uh, and seeing somebody who was previously housebound strictly because there was no way for them to get out of their house and now they're able to get out. As one of the girls told us one day, we gave her wings and allowed her to fly. Um, it was quite a moving experience to be there that day building that ramp. Um, we do Christmas projects, our Christmas project where we do stocking stuffers for 4,500 Head Start kids, little four or five year old kids that we take down to the County Coliseum here locally and hand out stockings and books to kids. And that's just a blast to see the joy that brings to these little kids as they come coming through. Uh, and know that you're touching the lives of somebody every day on a small local scale as well as globally. Um, other projects are in New Mexico or South America. I know groups go down to South America and build bridges to prosperity where they build bridges across streams that during the monsoon season they're flooded. Um, bring it back. The same groups over here are doing meth projects, um, doing their best to educate kids about the bad effects of meth methamphetamines and drugs. So we get to impact people both on a grand national, international, and a local level. And that, having that at your fingertips is just a, a great thing. I can't imagine why anybody wouldn't want to belong to Rotary. It's a privilege to me and an honor to belong to such an organization and be able to associate with many of the people in my club. All right, that was Mike Hackett, very uh, true Rotarian and always involved and speaks very highly of, of our Rotary Club of El Paso. Uh, coming up, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Mark Mathis and who's gonna do the honors of introducing our program and our guests. So uh, Mark, whenever you're ready, take it away. Fantastic. Thank you, Yasser. Uh, welcome, everyone. Real excited about the program today. This is always one of my favorite events of, of the year. And, um, you know, it's going to be a little different this year. But uh, this is the, the 12th year for the Plaza Classic Film Festival. Hard to believe. It's been, been that many years already. But it's coming up here at the end of, of July. It'll be kicking off. So uh, with us today to tell us all about it is the man, the, the program director for the El Paso Community Foundation, Doug Polin. And uh, this is one of his main responsibilities. He also works on the Jewel Box series um, at the Philanthropy Theater and uh, does tours of the theater. So uh, he, he's been a super busy guy as of late. Um, we know the formula for the for the series is going to be a little different this year. So we want to hear how we can all take advantage of it. Uh, just a little more about Doug before I turn the keys over to him. Uh, he had been uh, with the El Paso Times for, I guess, about five years after coming to El Paso in, in 2008. And uh, before that, had been a uh, entertainment writer for a paper in Flint, Michigan. So uh, take it away, Doug. Thank you, Mark. Doug, whenever you're ready, we got those poll questions. Just uh... 
cue Arlene to kick those off and she'll, she'll put them on the screen for you. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll try to keep it, I'll try to condense a lot into a little amount of time. Um, the festival is actually our 13th year and 13 and pandemic seem to go together well, you know? <laughs> so when we went into the stay at home situation in March, um, there was some faint hope that we could do our film festival in the normal format uh, where most of our movies are at the Plaza Theater, um, but also recognize that, you know, that might not happen. So we started working on alternative versions just in case. And I also kept regular contact with the management of the Plaza Theater to find out what, what to expect there. And it was becoming clear early on that the Plaza probably wouldn't be open when we rolled around at the end of July. And, and that's the case, the plaza is not open. And it probably will not reopen until September at the earliest, and it could even be later than that. So we looked at a variety of versions, and what I was trying to do originally was do a virtual version, uh, which is what a number of film festivals have had to go to this year. Um, but the problem I ran into there is we can't license classic films for a streaming platform. And the reason is that they already have existing licenses with Netflix and Hulu and these different uh, streaming services. So we thought about, well, maybe we make it some other kind of film festival, but that didn't feel right. So the idea of a hybrid came up. And what that means in this case is that we're gonna do a series of pop-up drive-ins all over town, over 11 nights and we'll still have a virtual component. So from July 30 through August 9, we'll have 11 programs at different locations. Uh, we're gonna open July 30th at Artovino's Desert Crossing and using their large uh, unpaved lot, we'll set up in there. We have a screen mounted on a semi truck. Screen's about, I think it's 32 by 18, uh, a little bit smaller than the plaza screen. And we're gonna open with Yellow Submarine, the Beatles Yellow Submarine. It's a sing-along version. And uh, it, it's only available in the month of July. So we thought Artavino's was a good spot for it. It was gonna be one of two places and Artavino's made more sense because Robert Artavino, one of the owners is a big music guy. So we'll open there. And then we're gonna move to Sunland Park Mall and we're gonna show Jaws on Friday night, July 31st. And then we're going to show, well, we are hoping to show Greece the next night, a Greece sing-along on, on Saturday, August 1st. And I say hoping because we're still trying to get confirmation of that title. The uh, environment that we're dealing with right now is that the studios and or their reps and the commercial theaters like the AMCs and the Cinemarks and the Regals, they're putting really serious restrictions on uh, not just us, but all the pop-ups that have proliferated around the country in the wake of theaters not being open. So we're still trying to get an answer on that. We have to get exceptions made and our studio reps go to bat for us, but here it is Thursday, uh, three weeks away and we still don't know for sure. But anyway, if, if it comes together, Greece will be our movie Saturday night at Sunland Park Mall. We will be using a parking lot that, that kind of connects from Dillard's, the men's store, to um, what used to be a Cinemark movie bistro. It's now permanently closed. And so we'll be up on that side off Mesa Hills. Um, then we're gonna move to what's called Camp Cohen Water Park, which is the old Cohen Stadium. And there's a parking lot on the first base side, one of the main entrance parking lots. And we're going to set up there and we will show the birds on August 2. And on August 3, we'll show ET. Then we move to the El Paso County Coliseum, uh, August 4 and 5. And we'll show Jurassic Park on the 4th. And then we hope to show Selena on August 5th. It's another title we're trying to confirm. And then we'll move to the Hospitals of Providence East Campus. They have a large gravel lot that's parallel with Loop 375. And we're gonna show Godzilla, King of the Monsters is our opening movie there. This is the 1956 one with Raymond Burr. And then the next night, a Friday night, August 7th, we'll show 
Young Frankenstein and the original Frankenstein as a double bill. So you can see the movie that started it all and the movie that, that made fun of it all, basically. And then our last two locations, our last two nights will be at the, uh, there's, an, there's a hangar at the El Paso International Airport. It used to be the El Paso Natural Gas Hangar, for those of you old enough to remember that. And it's at the corner of Lee Fisher and uh, Airport Road. And uh, we're going to set up outside the hangar. And we're going to show the Rocky Horror Picture Show and Hedwig and the Angry Inch on that Saturday night. Two alternative rock musicals that seem natural together. And then the hope is to close on Sunday, August 9th with Casablanca, which ends at an airport. Um, but we're also trying to get that one confirmed. <laughs> So we have about three titles that are not locked in yet, and that's why we haven't done any big announcements yet. We want to have all that secured before we put it out there. Um, there's a digital component that will run August 5 through 9, and what we're doing there is taking elements of our film festival that, that we have every year and moving them online. So we have a local film showcase called Local Flavor, and uh, we curate programs based on submissions. We've got some documentaries we were going to show as part of our film festival, the, the one that we'd been working on for a year. Uh, we were gonna do a big World War II tribute this year because of the anniversary of the end of the war, 75th anniversary. Uh, so some of those documentaries will we'll screen online instead. And then um, we were going to show Amadeus this year in the film festival. And F. Murray Abraham, who went to El Paso High School and won the Oscar for that movie, was going to come in and appear with it. Uh, that's not gonna happen, but we are gonna show it online. We got permission from the producer. Uh, the condition was instead of paying a licensing fee, he wanted us to make a donation to a local homeless shelter, which is part of what we do. And um, Murray Abraham has agreed to do an online interview. So he will uh, do this interview with the movie uh, as part of the digital programming. And then he has already agreed to come in and appear at the film festival next year. So we've already lined up our first guest for 2021, assuming we can have our normal film festival in 2021. Um, tickets for this will be by the carload. So they will be $25 per car. They'll go on sale next week. Uh, I don't know the exact date yet. I have a call today where we'll get that determined. Um, we are gonna checkerboard the cars so that they're kind of parked apart. And we're gonna encourage people to stay in cars as much as possible. We will limit the number of cars that we can park so that we don't oversell. And uh, we're still debating on what to do about food, but we'll have a bring your own food policy at all the venues. And then we may do some picnic baskets with pre-packaged items like popcorn or chips and candy and things like that um, for those people who want them, you know, sell it for like 10 bucks or something. Um, that we hope to have determined in the next week. And the reason all this stuff seems so late is because it is. We didn't start working on this idea in earnest till the end of May, right before uh, uh, Memorial Weekend. And the most complicating factor besides securing these locations, because we looked at 12 or 13, is the politics going on between the studios and the commercial theaters. Um, the rules change almost every week. And one of the things we've had to deal with is that some of the limitations put on us are that we can't show these movies within 10 miles of a commercial theater. And every location is within 10 miles of a commercial theater. So we have to ask our reps to go to bat for us and, and get exceptions made. So we've made exceptions, we've gotten exceptions in almost everything but the movies I mentioned, Greece, Selena, and Casablanca. The other thing we're gonna do is we're pairing these movies with uh, classic comedy shorts. For example, we've got two Three Stooges shorts. We've got two Laurel and Hardy shorts. We've got a Charlie Chaplin silent film and we have a Marx Brothers film. So we'll do some double features on, on weekends and we'll do single movies and shorts on others. We also have some old Bugs Bunny and, and Porky Pig cartoons that we're gonna run with some of these. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. We hope to announce any day 
once we get confirmation on these titles, we can announce. So you could see an announcement tomorrow. You can see one later today because <laughs> I keep bugging my rep on these titles. And, um, and then we're just going to push it out there as much as we can. We have TV commercials lined up, uh, radio spots, social media, all that. But we're just in a holding pattern. It's driving me a little bit crazy. Uh, so I would be happy to take some questions. I have to jump off at 1245 uh, to have a I'm going on a call about the hangar at the airport. Do you have Dr. Eth Eager lined up for next year? John, I think you know the question to that, the answer to that question. Uh, John's mom, Dr. Edith Eager, a Holocaust survivor and a best-selling author, clinical psychologist, is um, was scheduled to come in this year. As part of our World War II observation, we were also going to highlight uh, the end of the Holocaust. And we'd gotten permission from Steven Spielberg's company to show Schindler's List. So Dr. Eager, who is 92, John, is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She was going to come in, appear with Schindler's List, then do a separate event where she would, uh, we'd interview her on stage and then take questions from the audience. And she had also requested a private meeting with some of the victims' families from the August 3 shooting. So we were arranging that when, when everything kind of got shut down. Um, so we're hoping that Dr. Eager will come next year. John, we'll need you to make sure to lobby your mom. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Maybe this is a good opportunity to run that poll and, and uh, as uh, somebody yes. else asked the question. Here's a poll, uh, feel free to click on the answer. And then once you answer all, uh, all four questions, it hit end polling or, or submit answers at the bottom. Yeah, sir, I have, I have a question for Doug. Yes. Hi, Doug, it's Arlene. Um, we have a panoramic sunroof. Would it be okay if we go to the movies and open it up and maybe pop out of it? As long as you're not blocking people behind you. Okay. The parking pattern will be smaller vehicles to the front, larger vehicles to the back. Uh, if you're, say you've got a pickup and you want to sit in the back, that's fine, just as long as you're not wandering around. Um, also, Mark had a good question that I overlooked, which is what about sound? We're doing low power FM. So our production guys, uh, South Coast Audio, they're supplying the screen, they're doing the projection. We're actually using the digital projection system that we replaced in the Plaza Theater two years ago. Um, they're doing all that and they have a low power FM transmitter. Uh, FCC rules restrict us to about a 300 foot area. So each night we'll announce what the frequency is and they have to check the frequency from location to location to get a clear one. And so, you know, when we did a test at the airport, it was 104.3 FM and so on. So we'll do that from venue to venue. And in a couple of places, we may put some, some speakers outside, depending on the setup. Hmm. So as long as your sunroof doesn't, you know, block the guy behind you, you're, you're good. We actually, one of our to-do lists is we actually have to have rope on hand and jumper cables uh, for people whose batteries die on them. Uh, and also, if you're in an SUV and you, you pull in back, backward, backways and you open up so you can watch you've got to tie it so it doesn't go above your roof and block the car behind you oh, so we'll have rope. Of everything <laughs> you have to <laughs> we've been working on this i mean intent intensely since late may and so i've interviewed film festival directors uh video platform services uh drive-in movie theater operators i've probably looked at 50 drive-in movie theater websites to see how they do it. Catherine's daughter went to a drive-in in Austin, and so we talked, so she could tell me how they did it. Nice. Okay. Very cool. And Arlene, I think uh, the, uh, the, we got a lot of uh, submittals here in the poll, if you want to end it, and we could sh uh, get here with Doug and, and see uh, if our public uh, knows these responses. <laughs> see if I can remember them. Okay, so let's see here. What year did the Plaza Theater open? Uh, let's see here. Forty-seven percent is a majority. They're saying nineteen thirty. Is that is that true? That's correct. All right. Okay. Yeah. What date did it open? No. I'm kidding. <laughs> Just, hmm. 
Catherine would know that. Maybe. <laughs> I she don't. Better. I should. All right. Let's see. Next one. Who played monster in Frankenstein? Uh, ironically, uh, Mark Mathis got 100% of the vote here. Uh, really? <laughs> yeah. Who played Frank I got. Uh, we got. 40% Lon Chaney. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing their name right. Is that correct? A correct cult? pronunciation, yeah. But the oh, correct so. answer is Boris Karloff. Uh, Boris Karloff. Ironically, he's at 27% of the votes here. So, okay. You know when that, and so you know when Frankenstein came out in 1931, he was not a well-known actor. He'd been in a bunch of things, but people didn't know him. So when the movie starts and, and they, they credit the cast, it says the monster question mark. And then at the end of the movie, they repeat the cast and they list his name there. That was his star making turn, so to speak. Third question, who directed Jaws? And 80% said Steven Spielberg. That was an easy one. Yeah, they're right. <laughs> what song does Sam play again? For Elsa in Casablanca. Play it again, Sam. Told you never to play that song. Right. And you know, she didn't actually say play it again, Sam. She said play it, Sam. Play so it, Sam. Often misquoted line. Yeah. And 60% of submittal here is as time goes by. That's correct. All right. Is there any more questions? And, and Doug, with all this excitement about the temperature, <laughs> The uh, Classic Film Festival, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get ready for this show. Just give me one sec. Okay. <laughs> I'm expecting Chevy Chase doing his Jaws well, thing. You know, with this cold front coming in that Chuck was mentioning, ne next week we're going to cool off to 104. I'm going to get ready. And remember, just looking at you, kid, <laughs> right. we'll have Paris is the line. And Chuck, thank you for the heads up on the cold front. I think I'm ready. But uh, all jokes aside, um, thank you guys so much for everything you guys do. I'm so delighted to hear when people say, hey, this hasn't been canceled. Yeah. The show must go on. We just need to think outside the box, reinvent ourselves. As Sonny Brown pointed out during the installation, and I'll, I'll always remember that, we just got to you know, meet these challenges and do some change and just adapt to the changing environment. So kudos to you guys. I'm very excited about it. Uh, thank you for joining us. And sure. by the way, uh, next week's program is uh, Mariana Marina Monsivais, owner of Bacula Public Relations. Uh, again, we're making these uh, uh, programs different and interesting, and we're having a lot of fun with them. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And remember, Rotary opens opportunities. And I think I'm supposed to hit that bell over there. <laughs> Doug, Mark, thank you. Great program. Chuck, thank you for joining us. And all Rotarians and guests, thank you so much. See you next Thanks. week. Good Thanks job. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Great job, Yasser. Good job, good job, everybody.